Yo, what's going on guys? All around Reptiles here, and today we are going to be talking about the top five things you need before getting a gargoyle gecko. Gargoyles are one of the close relatives to um, eyelash geckos or crested geckos, as uh, some of you might know as eyelash or gargoyle, or haha, -ha, um, eyelash or crested, uh, but they are very close um, relative to them, they just don't have eyelashes um, or, or crests. Uh, but these are the top five things uh, you need to know before you get them, and uh, in the next year or so I will be breeding them, so uh, if you want some gargoyles, just wait because mine are really small and they need to grow up so uh, I can actually start my breeding practice. So let's get into number one. So. Number one, um, I think the biggest part of getting, um, I mean, a new animal in general is have your food 100% ready. This is Pangea uh, Gecko Mix. It is uh, growth and breeding. Um, a lot of people say it doesn't actually help with anything, um, but this is what I use. I will probably be buying. This is a little bit more expensive. Um, but I thought it was just because, you know, growth and breeding, you know, I'm going to be growing them up and breeding them, so I thought it would be a, a good way to do that, but, um, you know, this is, this is a, actually a much bigger bag than I ever thought I'd need, but I bought it just in case. Um, and, uh, I think this is, uh, Pangea is really good, uh, Rapashi I know is really good too, another good, um, gecko diet also crested gecko diets um, is what they're mostly branded as because this has a crested gecko on it um, but it is just uh, gecko food I mean it is so uh, yeah gecko species it says for crested geckos and all fruit eating gecko species and that's what these guys are so uh, I'm gonna get one of them out to actually show you what they are and uh, which one I have out because I have two of them. All right, well, this is Twizzler, my red striped gargoyle gecko, and she's jumped onto the tripod. All right, well, this is uh, Twizzler. I will be getting some better B roll as we're seeing right now because uh, she's a very jumpy animal and uh, I've woken her up, and you know, it's not nighttime where they like to be out, so. She doesn't like being out, but um, another thing, uh, well, this is actually number two. They are super jumpy. I mean, um, she used to be like very not jumpy. You just have to learn um, what your specific gecko does. I mean, she jumps a lot less than actually Goliath, my uh, second, or my actually my first gargoyle out of the two I have. Uh, but I'm just gonna let her jump on to this log um, that you can't actually see, but you were seeing right now because of B-roll, thank you. Um, but it is just a really good way to, you know, not kill your animal. Uh, just, it's kind of a play, it's kind of a slow process of getting used to holding your animals. Um, I know I've done it for literally every animal I have. Just, it's learning how to hold them and learning how they react with you holding them and how to hold them. Uh, but I would say take, either sit on the ground with them or sit like, sit on an area that is cushioned and low to the ground. So if they do end up jumping off of your hands, uh, then they won't necessarily fall from like, you know, five foot or four foot. Because I'm five foot five and um, they've definitely jumped like pretty a uh, pretty far distance, so it's not necessarily good for them. So uh, that's number two, uh, and let's get on to number three. Number three, you need a pretty sizable enclosure. Uh, now she is probably like the size of my finger, which is about like uh, two inches. She's about probably two and a half inches um, right now. So she's really small, but I want to show you this enclosure. Now it looks really, really bright. It is not that bright, um, but you know we're gonna, we're gonna put on some fade. Oh, that's that's aggressive. Wait, why is it so aggressive? Slow down. 
Ah, much better. Uh, but this is LEDs that I put uh, in the enclosure just to give it some spice and uh, to learn how to use LEDs with uh, enclosures. It's not the best, there's definitely still some uh, like LED stripping you can see, but I did my best. Enough about what mine is, but you will want a 25 gallon tall enclosure that has enough room for your gecko to run around uh, at night, hide uh, in the daytime and have definitely a lot of foliage like I do on this. Uh, you are seeing a lot of b-roll right now of, of the enclosure. I do have two of them, uh, two of the same exact enclosures. If you want to see how I build these enclosures, because I built these from scratch, uh, go check out my YouTube video up at the top of your screen right now that's pinned, hopefully, if I remember me editing, please do that. Um, but this is one of the two 20 gallons. The other 20 gallon is not currently ready. It's literally um, just been uh, coconut bedding, or I don't know. Um, but it just has the coconut like shavings uh, pressed onto the ledges and stuff like that. It doesn't have anything else, any of the foliage, any of the LED lights, any of the uh, bottom like drainage layer thing. Um, I really want to do a bioactive enclosure, but sadly with gargoyles um, from some of my friends that actually breed gargoyles, they apparently like to lay eggs in the roots of trees so that's not a great thing i want them you know i don't have to look in five different spots i can just look in one single spot but uh this is definitely going to be a really nice enclosure for them uh and i have another one if i need to separate them out or if i want to maybe raise one up but right now they're in 20 gallon simplistic enclosures with paper towel, a log, and some leaves to hide under. It is very, very, very basic. Um, they will go into this, but right now they aren't just, they aren't big enough. So I would say even smaller than a 10 gallon, that's is just what I had. Um, I don't necessarily want to go out and buy something. More like even a five gallon will suit them for the first, like, basically uh, five-ish months and then you can move them up to probably a 10 gallon and then once they're full adults which is about a year old they can go into this and not be totally stressed out not be able to find food water and then you know, uh, die a very painful death but uh, we're gonna turn these lights off because the camera does not like it uh, but this is the 20 gallon enclosure that I have made if you want to check that out obviously please do um, and while you're down there, uh, go hit subscribe on my YouTube channel. We are almost to 200 subscribers. Um, really kind of insane. Uh, I am coming out with merch in the next like three-ish months because uh, I want to test drive the merch. So uh, in like October 10th uh, and 11th above, um, I will be wearing hopefully merch, not just my marching band uh, show shirt because uh, I had marching down yesterday, but we don't talk about that. Uh, so we're going to get on to number four. All right, number four. Make it easier for yourself with spraying down the enclosures and with food. All I have to do is take this and one of the Pangea cups that I have bought and sprinkle a little bit, not sprinkle, but um, squirt a little bit in just to really cover the, like a centimeter um, of the actual cup because they don't eat a lot I mean it looks like they don't eat at all but they do because I can see like their footprints because they, they shove their hands in it too and it's it's a mess uh, when they you know like to trample in it and uh, you know cover the walls with it literally uh, but make it easier for yourself all you have to do is mix up um, what I have been taught is a wimpy milkshake uh, consistency and even a little bit wetter in um, at least what mine do is if you squeeze them too hard the top falls off learn my lesson from that um, 
but definitely uh, buy ones that are a lot, a lot better than mine. I, w I need to buy more, but you know, uh, make it easier for yourself. I mean, just squirt done. And then even with water spraying down enclosures, I bought this at Home Depot. You don't even have to buy the actual like, you know, twenty-five dollar one at PetSmart. You just go like this. It, it continuously sprays. All you have to do is pump it up. Uh, it's, it's so helpful. Oh my god! It has uh, given me the ability to spray down enclosures so much easier, including with a 120 gallon for Athena, my Blue Tuck Skink. Uh, that takes a long time, and this has saved me so much time with really anything. And if you are a gargoyle gecko keeper or you want to own one get one of these. I know it's huge, it looks huge, but also you can fill up their water. Because all you have to do is take a little cup and spray it into it and then it'll fill up your water so you don't have to have an extra bottle next to their enclosure. Alright, well let's get on to number five. Number five, they don't necessarily need lighting. Now, where their current setup is they only get light from the main light um, and you know all of the other light around um, but they don't actually get a, a specific bulb a specific type of bulb UVB blah blah you can give them UVB um, they don't necessarily use it um, or at least nobody uh, uses it that I know because uh, it's just kind of a I mean UVB bulbs are very expensive they're pretty darn pricey, um, including if you get the ones with the heat. Uh, please don't get heat bulbs. They don't. They don't need heat bulbs. Um, but uh, I will give them obviously a day-night cycle for uh, this enclosure. But currently, they do not get one, uh, just because there's really no point. Um, and I will have day and night cycle for them. I will have lighting for, for them in this enclosure, but um, right now they don't. But you know, it's up to you. You can give them lighting. I think it looks better if they do have lighting because you know, it just makes them stand out a lot more in a room. But you don't have to. It's uh, just based on your choice. Let's go in the outro. All right. Well, that is going to be the end of this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is also the same exact gecko. But she is just super dark right now. She can either be fired up, which she is fired up right now, um, or she could be very pale and white and just have the red stripe as they are named. Um, but I think it's a really cool mechanic, uh, not mechanic, but uh, just the thing that they've evolved to do is basically camouflage, because if she's on this dark log that I have in her enclosure, she will turn out to be this dark color. Now, she's not as dark as she normally would be, but she um, she will camouflage. So if she's on a paper towel, she will be uh, pretty darn white with that red stripe, or more, it turns a little orange, but you know. All right, well, that is going to be it for this video of All Unwrapped. I was hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is the top five things you need to know about gargoyles before you get one. And uh, if you like this video, please like it, and uh, let's get to 200 subscribers on YouTube. I already have 50,000 on TikTok, as you've seen on my last video. If you want to see me go eat a doobie roach, uh, go do that, because or go watch that, because it was not not good, not delicious. But that is going to do it for this video of All in Our House. Please uh, subscribe and hit that like button, and I'll see you on Monday.